so good. Woo! Oh, it is Farmcraft Day. <laughs> I know, Kathy, me too. As soon as the music comes on, I start bebop and I cannot help myself. I mean, oh. that 30 second countdown was pretty sweet, but that follow up was even better. <laughs> that was, uh, that That's was right. the, uh, that was the grand slam right there. That, that was, was the encore. Moment. That's the one you come back out for when the crowd is chanting your name. <laughs> right? Exactly. Mayor. Mayor. Oh, we had, we got both of them going, Farmcraft and the mayor. Well, welcome everyone. Um, this is the Farmcraft live stream that we are calling From the Field, which means that we have heard from students and educators who are participating in Farmcraft, literally from the field, from around the world. And we're excited to share their experience, their tips, their tricks. They are going to teach even the five of us some things we did not know were possible. Well, four of us, Brian probably knew they were possible. But anyway, we've got all kinds of things <laughs> coming up for you today. So super excited to have you here. My name is Claire LeBeau. I am the Director of Communications for NACEF, the North America Scholastic Esports Federation. We love to blend play and learning and Farmcraft is a perfect example of that. And let's do a quick round robin of introductions. Speaking of the mayor, take it away. Hey, everybody. I'm Clever Like. Um, yeah, I start, started with being interested in computers when I was uh, you know, like in sixth grade and just followed that interest, connecting with friends, going to school, learning, you know, collaborating, finding myself through a great career in, in uh, software and technology. And then I got to kind of relive all of those dreams again now as an adult doing this full time. So I get to make video games for kids to enjoy and to learn from and hopefully be inspired from. So that's what's fun in my world. And speaking of fun, Kathy Chow Isaacs, bring it. The most fun. <laughs> hey, I'm Kathy Chow Isaacs um, at I Wear the Crowns on Twitter. I am a global Minecraft mentor and part of this awesome Minecraft challenge team at NACEF. So excited to bring you some stories from the field today with this fabulous group. My favorite, I would say, my favorite. And um, fun times 100 is right up here. Right there, right there. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I was clockwise. You know what? You know what? I'm going to wait there. patiently because I don't know what my multiplier is actually going to be it's when they get be, to me. So it may be more huge. than 100. Fingers crossed, you know? <laughs> Well, I, I can just say, I, I I really like Kathy, but sometimes she fibs. Maybe just not very good at math because much more fun down there. Uh, um, hi everybody, I'm Adam Cornish. I work at the uh, depart the U.S. Department of State in the Office of Agricultural Policy. I started out with a farmer's field in my backyard. I went to college at a land grant agricultural university, and now I'm talking about plants with all of you. I'm having a great time with everybody, and um, just want to see where we continue to go with farmcraft and hear more from the students because really you guys are the ones that are learning and growing and helping us do the same so i'll pass it on over to eric multiplier so close so close you gotta just do one of these next time oh i mean uh, <laughs> i mirror i mirrored mine so i i go. look right but you guys still see it wrong okay it's perfectly fine uh, so hi, uh, my name is Eric Leitner. I'm at Professor Eric on Twitter. Since everyone's just throwing their Twitter out there, you got to self-promote apparently. Like, it's really important. Um, I've been an educator for 22 years. Um, love bringing gaming opportunities to students to the classroom. I'm a STEM and computer science instructional facilitator, and I see gaming as a core aspect of all of that. Um, and I'm always excited to be part of this program. This is this is where the fun's at. It's not down there. It's not over there. It's It's everywhere. It's this whole thing. So Claire, I'm going to throw it back to you. Oh, mute. Claire's on mute. Claire is super mm -hmm. muted. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every time. Right. Every time. <laughs> Ding dang it. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. And I was saying I didn't get a fun multiplier, but after a faux pas like that, well, I guess I don't get it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, let's get on to the content and the students, because here's what we know. We're a bunch of adults talking to you every week, but what's really cool is to be able to hear from your peers. And so that's why we are taking today to um, just celebrate what the kids are doing all around the world as they participate in Farmcraft and give you some ideas because this is the last week. Friday, everything is due. May 27th, you gotta have it all in. All right, so without further ado, let's move on to 
our first video, which comes to us from NACEF Japan. And I think I'm not going to give an intro. I think we just want to watch this and then we'll comment when we get to the end. Here we go.やっぱり生徒の個性や特性を重視時代のニーズ社会を求める実践力育成のため柔軟な専門教育を行っています。やってみて松本さんどうでしたか難しかったです。どの辺が難しかったですか水と肥料をどこで埋めたらいいのかわ
that's the truth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on, right? You got butterflies and caterpillars and weather and water and all of that. You got to manage it all. You know, one of the things they brought up that I thought was really great was, um, you know, one of the students had mentioned that they were learning both English and now the game of Farmcraft and this experience at the same time. Um, and then it kind of became clearer quicker than they thought just through the immersion of a program of, of working in something that not only are you kind of forced to engage with the language, but then you start to make those connections between what you're doing and what it's asking you to do. And you're saying, okay, I understand that word because I'm seeing it over and over again. It's I'm immersed in it. Um, so that's, you know, that's really powerful to me because we're not just learning the one thing, right? We're learning all of those other skills uh, that the students were talking about, the importance of communication, collaboration, you know, and those skills that the teacher had mentioned wanting her students to have uh, and to grow to be successful. Well, and to add on to that, just, I like that even though English is not the, is not where she is necessarily wants to be at the moment, she's having a shared experience with um, you know, hundreds of other kids around the world as they engage in the program. And so they might not have the same speaking language, but they now have the same farming language. Ooh, that's oh, cool. That is cool. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That is cool. We're going to make right. farming the universal language instead of like music or math or science. It's going to be farming. I mean, eating Should feels be. like the universal language. And so farming has right? got to be part of eating, right? Straight right? to your belly. We see, exactly. we see that on like those food tourism shows all the time, right? That food mm -hmm. is our universal language. That's what brings mm -hmm. people together. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's wrong. No. Right. Right. I'm with you on that. Okay. Well, let's move on. Our next video comes to us from Team eBlaze Fire. There we go. Yeah. Sweet. Fancy. Hello, everyone. We are Team Eblis Fire, representing Bangladesh in the NASA Farmcraft 2022 competition. Our adult sponsor and coach is Mr. Istek Ahmed. People might think that success is determined on the results, but I think there is much more to it. Having mutual respect, common goals, open communication, and lots of patience can make the team click. Farmcraft challenged us with making quick decisions. We also had to watch out for the strengths and weaknesses in our team members. Sometimes there was someone who was very good at hunting butterflies. Maybe there was also someone who had trouble with hunting the caterpillars. But in the end, we tried to adjust our strategies to make our run successful. Another important thing was proper guidance. Whenever we faced any problem, we needed someone to help us solve it. Our coach was there to lend us a hand during the entire competition. Farmcraft had a lot of new and interesting game mechanics that were not in the base Minecraft game. We took notes on how the scores was changing. We always set game plans before starting. We should only water when the score is near 500 and so on. The video submissions were fun to make. At first, we had a very little idea how we could make a proper presentation, but our coach helped us turning the scripts into a good presentation. We wanted the judges to notice our videos. So we took enough time to make our videos interesting. We learned that there are differences between biome and their effects on crops. It was so easy to be out of water in desert while we almost got flooded a tropical biome. Watching the Food for Thought streams also taught us many things about farm crop. We learned about modern day farming and technologies like crop rotation and even genetic engineering. I even wrote about how crop rotations keep soil healthy in my classwork. I got better at telling my teammates what exactly I want to do in the game. Our mutual under understanding has also improved a lot. We trust each other more. Our coach taught us how to follow the KW charts. Some of us are much better at reading and speaking in English. Thanks to the video presentation had to make, we also sharpened our skills in video editing. We have played in local contests before, but not in any international competition. Farmcraft has been like an eye-opener because we're competing against so many countries in the world. This is a big competition. We are facing big challenges. So we need to actually think out of the box to be competitive. Farmcraft has taught us about teamwork, leadership, and, in, and it also helped us gain communication skills. As part of the Eblis Club, we have been playing under the guidance of Mr. Istiak. Considering all of these things, this competition felt like a little bit of professional gaming scene. Native Farmcraft 2022 has been an amazing experience. 
leading all of these teams through a global competition has been a surreal journey to say the least. Uh, most of these students they have played in local competitions before and uh, this time both for the students and as for myself we had to look after a larger challenge, a larger demographic. Uh, which would mean we would have to expect competition from all over the world. Since this is a global competition, it is very difficult to say whether we are hitting the mark or not. So I've tried my best to guide the students so that they can achieve the highest scores. And definitely as they are participating in a global competition, the competition is much more difficult than what they would expect. Leading all these teams through Farmcraft has been an educative experience to say the least. In the game, I tried to investigate how the decisions and the points we made affected the scores and to what extent. We had to look after whether the teams were performing properly, whether they were communicating with each other or not, and whether they were balancing their school life and the competition at the same time as well. Uh, the, for the students, uh, they had to figure out plenty of things regarding the game mechanics because, uh, as one of the students already said, uh, most of these mechanics are different from whatever we see in the regular Minecraft streams. So uh, all of these farming techniques, how the scores were affected, whether they had dependencies or not, what sort of rain we would get in a particular biome, all of these things had to be considered before we were actually going to make a plan for a run. So uh, over the seasons, all these students, they tried to formulate their own strategies, they tried to come up with different ideas that would lead them to higher scores. Now, as a coach, I definitely tried to make the process as easy as possible for them. But uh, it was at the end the students themselves who, find, who found out the actual strategies which they should have used in the games. All of these teams, all the students, they have performed their very best and I believe that their hard work will ultimately help us to reach at least one of the top spots in the Farmcraft leaderboard. So we're hoping to win gold and going for the top spot. Thank you. NACEF Farmcraft 2022 has been an amazing experience for us. It was not just about gaming, but also about improving our thinking and learning new skills. We have learned so many things about farming that we could not learn otherwise. And now, we are hoping to reach for the champion spot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Coming to get you. That's part of the goal here. Yeah, I like that yeah. at the end. The Eye on the prize. Oh, Absolutely. Man. I got to say, too, you know, one of the things they talked about was, you know, th that they actually took some time to think, how do we want to present our information, right? When we do the video screen, you know, uh, submissions, how do we want to do it? And um, I, I want to give them the shout out because we see their videos week after week uh, and they've absolutely nailed it. They're, they're some of our favorites to watch. Uh, the editing is great. And the editing in this one was, you know, phenomenal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're, they're uh, challenge submission videos, really, like they definitely push themselves and you can tell. Uh, and we love to see it. So shout out. <laughs> it's super good. Absolutely. A quick, Thanks, clever, like a quick, clever, like life lesson here. Um, <laughs> surround yourself with people that are better than you because that competitive spirit will make you try harder, right? Like if you surround yourself with people that keep you complacent, you won't push as hard when you have people that, that bring you up to a new level and you have that, you know, you can summon that competitive spirit, then you're better and the people around you are better. It raises, elevates everything. So try to be that person for someone else and try to seek that person out for yourself. Mm. Can I just say, Brian, you all I prefer around. the term challenge. Can I, can I, I'm sorry. Can I say the word sure. challenge rather than better? Sure. So, mm -hmm. But yes, Eric's Eric, very correct. You all challenge me in the best way possible. Mm. You're so challenging. <laughs> oh, I loved how they talked about so much about the teamwork and the way that they were working together and they mapped out what they were going to do. I mean, there's clearly a lot of effort and a lot of collaboration that's going into this. It's fantastic. Yes. Kathy. And might I add, maybe some iteration. Woo! Mm, there it is. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. Get that in there. <laughs> Iteration. That will cheer just about anybody up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One person in particular. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Well, we love hearing from students and giving you the opportunity to hear from each other. And so there is another fantastic place to do that. And that is in the Farmcraft Discord. So we just want to be sure that you are all aware that this exists. Um, we have a special 
channel in the NACEF community discord. And if you go right on down there to Farmcraft, then you will be able to hop in and you can see that we've had people sharing um, some when they were having challenges with the world. And then we're also putting in there um, sort of announcements for when the next stream is or when things are due. But this is also a great place just to chat with each other and say, hey, you know, here's what I'm using or I I've heard the last two teams mentioned video editing. What kind of video editing software do you like to use? Or, you know, what other things are you interested in editing? This is a place where, because you're participating in a worldwide competition, this is a place for you to also chat with the other students from around the world and get to know each other. So make sure you hop into that Discord. All right. So we are. Um, headed in we already said we've got two days left this is the last week of may we've got two days to get your challenges in so we thought we would share a couple videos from challenge two eric you want to talk about what we've got there yeah so just a reminder remember you want to get all these videos in that makes you eligible for when you submit your scores so you want to make sure you have challenge one regular season challenge one two and three all submitted by the time you get your scores in and that deadline is coming up quickly uh, but in our challenge two, remember, we're still challenge two is still you can still submit to it. Challenge three is still wide open. Uh, all of these are still uh, accessible. Uh, but for challenge two, we challenged our teams to focus strictly on profit. Of course, challenge three, which is happening right now in the background, is the opposite. They're, they're focusing strictly on climate. But we're going to share a few more because we'll share a few of challenge threes as we go on. Uh, but we want to share a few more now that we've given it time to grow uh, that library of student submissions of our challenges from challenge two. So this, again, was them focusing on profit. And our first one that we wanted to share was from Team MSLA. Uh, this is their Team Two from South Africa. Hello, we are MSLA Team Two, the Math and Science Leadership Academy from South Africa. We completed the tropical island and temperate biomes. In the island biome, we experienced a lot of rain, letting us save quite a bit of money. The temperate biome on the other hand surprisingly had less caterpillars, letting us save money by not having to buy any insecticide. Putting our focus only on profit made us use less fertilizer and water. Thus, using less fertilizer, the climate was actually positively impacted. The biggest challenge we faced in the island and tropical biomes was the caterpillars. I would just like to thank Farmcraft for giving us this amazing opportunity to experience and understand what agriculture truly is. All right, so there we heard the a little bit. The biggest challenge was the caterpillars. Yeah. Everybody loves those caterpillars. <laughs> they're our favorite. I am best friends with all the caterpillars. You know, Brian, when you hear a... that, you go, whoa. Yeah, and you know what's <laughs> even more fun is the um, when you start talking about the prizes for the people that participate and stuff like that, we have some fun surprises in store. Speaking of caterpillars. Oh. Do you think yeah. if you put the those dots caterpillar, together? Caterpillar. Ooh. I want to see like caterpillar armor from from all of your hunt. You've you've <laughs> slain all the caterpillars, and now you gloriously <laughs> you... portray. <laughs> That's right, like, like caterpillar <laughs> hat. That's right. You have them like draped over your shoulders, <laughs> yes. and a headband that has a caterpillar yeah. tied around your head. You know. Too bad we can't do capes. Yeah, that would definitely be <laughs> the ultimate. But maybe you could be the caterpillar. Ah, I yeah. just feel like a little hint there. All right, All so right. we've got we've got one more to share from Challenge Two, uh, and that is from Team Yildiz from Turkmenistan. Uh, and again, they kind of broke their video down to talk about each of the biomes uh, that they experienced and the differences uh, as they were focusing on profit. Our team, Yildiz team, answered the first question. Our team played in desert island, tropical, temperate, and tundra biomes. 
We completed tropical island and temperate biomes. We didn't use fertilizer and other items from farmer to save money. Answer the question. Mostly to save money, we used less water and used fertilizer very rarely. This mindset to focus only profit did, didn't impact to the climate. Answer to third question. The most difficult biomes were desert and tundra biomes because there is there there is no rain and water needed more often hmm. that's what we normally Perfect. hear we some we often hear that caterpillars are the hardest part hmm. mm. ah good point i mean there's lots of challenges yeah, I really like sharing both of these sort of bookended because one of them very much focused on uh, the caterpillars being the biggest challenge, which is one of the things we tend to say over and over again because they are my biggest challenge. Um, but even the the second team, their their experience not only was very different, but if we looked at their numbers, if you if you took a second to look at their numbers, yeah, they focused on profit. They had like a lot of money in the bank, um, but their climate score was still doing pretty good. Um, nice. so, you know, I would love to dig deeper and see how that balances. And I have a feeling maybe when we get the challenge three video for them, where they focus on climate, we'll see maybe how that happens or why that's happening. The one thing so I'm again, noticing in these videos yeah. is that the players have figured out how to leverage the hitboxes of the caterpillars. If you notice they're attacking, um, they're eliminating the caterpillars without the bug spray. They're using the manual, like precise hitbox between the plants, which is very tricky and requires mm -hmm. a lot of coordination among your team. And that's why these these teams are kind of standing out because you can see them actually doing that very accurately, which is pretty cool. And we've been doing that on the streams, but I don't think we've, except for maybe once, really explicitly called it out that there was a yeah. way to do that. And uh, mm -hmm. so they're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me say, I, I can't hit box. I destroy my crops every time. <laughs> no <laughs> manual dexterity. <laughs> exactly exactly these these students have both they have the manual dexterity and they are also so smart when i listen to these and i hear yeah. what they've learned and what they're thinking and how they're collaborating it's amazing i'm so yeah. impressed yep yep yeah and, and on that um and that, that kind of segues really well into what we're going to do next because we actually are going to hear from uh, one of the teams that won one of the challenges from last year uh, who wanted to kind of give their advice on uh, to all the students who are playing now, to other players uh, that are playing in their region or across the world uh, about how they did it. So um, this is one of our teams uh, from Botswana from last year. And again, I love this is like a global experience. How many different places have we mentioned already wow. in this stream alone? Really? Um, Four or five, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With well, some of their tips for what to do uh, in Farmcraft. This is the TLCS Blue. We are from Botswana. Our advice to you is to analyze your data or scores. For example, last year we had a weed penalty and we tried to reduce it and it worked sufficiently because we analyzed what was wrong. In addition, we communicated with each other frequently. Since we have experience in catching butterflies, data analysis, and getting caterpillars, etc. Teamwork and hard work are the most fundamental parts of playing farmcraft. Sometimes the game can be stressful because we get impatient, but the key is to put our feelings aside and work as a team. We appreciate the opportunity NASEF gave us last year. So cool. I love that. Um, you know what I think stands out to me in that is they said teamwork and hard work are the keys. And wouldn't most people, if you say I'm playing a game to learn <laughs> how to do agriculture, they would not associate hard work with that. 
but it actually is because you're putting your mind to it. You're figuring out what you're going to do. It's strategic. So absolutely hard work to do that. Yep. One of the things that stands out to me now that we've watched quite a few um, is how much technology we have nowadays uh, in order to make communication better, right? We've seen subtitles being added to videos. We've heard text to speech being utilized. Um, we've learned from students how they are sort of engaging and learning a second language um, because all of that is so relevant and so important to, to making sort of farming, first of all, as a process, functional work and better for a global, uh, I guess, market that needs food, right? We need food uh, and sustenance, nourishment, um, but also just science in general needs good communication. It's what makes science work. It's what makes science powerful. Um, so uh, that's that's something that I see and I'm like, we've got students who are utilizing what they've got in order to communicate better. And that, that gives me lots of hope for the future. Yeah, I feel like this is a showcase of what is in store for us in this world. And it makes me so hopeful and so eager for the future because these students, they're just fantastic. The way that they're, they're planning and collaborating. And like you said, they're using technology. And yet at the same time, they're learning about one of the oldest practices in the world, right? Farming. I mean, we've been eating for how long? So we've been farming for how long? I mean, it's really impressive what they're all doing. About 10,000 years. 10,000 years. 10,000 years old. Is that agriculture or is that eating? Because I feel I mean, like I've been eating for 10,000 <laughs> I, I, I mean, like we've, we were photosynthesizing before that. No, 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 we weren't. We weren't. No, we've no. been <laughs> we've been an agricultural, oh, largely an agricultural, cultural species for about 10,000 years, maybe a little bit longer than that, but that's what they've been able to date is when people actually started sitting down and started thinking about what they were doing rather than just going out and collecting tubers from the ground and getting berries off of trees. And so agriculture is about 10,000 years old. Right. And that's precisely the point where they realized where people would put down their game because they were hungry and then go, <laughs> that's when they discovered food. Yes. Well, and so when we, you're talking about game, first. you're talking about you're talking about the animals that they found out there and killed <laughs> that kind of game, right? Yeah, they put down that game. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, we've gotten all kinds of advice here from, as Eric pointed out, students around the world from it feels like every corner of the world so far. So, one thing that I'm excited about is this time around, you get to watch students play in FarmCraft instead of all of us play in FarmCraft. So mm -hmm. um, we're gonna start off with a video from a group in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, we're gonna hop into some of their gameplay and we'll watch for a bit and then see what kind of uh, tips we can take away from them as well. And to so point out, this is Georgia, right. Atlanta, US. Oh, correct. Thank you very much. So one of the biggest lessons we learned was when we were playing the challenge two, focused on money and our climate, our soil and our water all went to zero and we had a natural disaster and the tornado came and it was pretty much game over. Um, <laughs> uh, that was a huge, huge lesson uh, that we had not considered. Like what happens when everything hits zero? Do we have a chance to recuperate? Can we come back from that? Um, and the answer really was no, like you can't come back from, from nothing. You have to start over. Um, so what kind of advice would you give other teams? So, um, do you have advice on how you worked as a team and what made you successful? Um, you just got a lot of communication and like, there's a way you can keep the certain items if you put them in the chest in the house. Ah. That might help. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So you can use the Ooh. chest in the house to keep items and just communicating with your teammates. Very good. What about you, Jasola? What... Eric's on mute. Eric's totally there. muted. I paused it there and then I muted, which is like, you know, the worst faux pas you can do in, in streaming. <laughs> Just totally nailed it. Uh, we were on the edge of our seat. You had us. How, you had how us. many streams have we done for both Farmcraft 1 and Farmcraft 2? That chest has always been there. And we never thought, hey, if we take whatever bug spray we've got left or whatever mm -hmm. items left and we have left and put them in that chest before this 
season or this day in the older one is over, we can go grab it again in day two. So, or, wait, or, so what did we've they never do? done they it. Had, they gave it to a kid, and then one kid ran back to the lab, and everybody else was hanging out. That's my guess. House. Would it be in the house in on the farm? So yeah, so we 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 do a lot of this kind of like factoring where we're like, okay. What's the usefulness of storage or a chest or a crafting table, things like that? Because we're like they're they're kind of in with the design, and we program like certain scenarios where it's not helpful. Like if you put the seeds in there, there's a lot of cases where that's not going to help you, and we shut the game down so you so they things can't transfer over. But maybe there are some places where it is, and maybe the bug spray is one idea where you could save a little bit of money by storing your leftovers round to round hmm. if you're clever and you know like i clever think that's like. that's innovative <laughs> i like that i i, mean, I, I, I am like that. clever but not yeah. totally clever. Just, <laughs> you really i mean i feel like i always use all the bug spray i've never i haven't ever had any <laughs> left over have you tried so, that perfect I, downward hit box into the game you gotta yeah, try that i mean yeah, every bug spray it. is I an environment so. you gotta be fun. economical there Kate, kathy and also, if you apply, if you apply it willy nilly, that's not great for the soil either. I know, and you know, right. I'm so good at that. <laughs> yes. Put it Kathy is like commando and uh, <laughs> on the farm <laughs> cap with the bug spray, just, <laughs> just laying waste to the caterpillars. She's uh, willy nilly. That's her. Uh, that's her. That's her farm craft name. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's let's take a look at a little bit more. If you. What advice do you have? Uh, what kind make of- Make sure you have money. Make sure you have money, <laughs> yeah. So keep track of that money. Have an accountant, maybe somebody if, designated. If you run out of money, you won't be able to buy water or a fertilizer. Yeah. To keep the soil up, and the climate's gonna go down, and then you're going to nice. have a natural disaster. Absolutely. Oh, we really appreciate having this team um, send in their video and share a little bit of their exploration and their time in Farmcraft. And I think we have one other video from a team, again, in Japan that they sent us. And this is their gameplay experience in Farmcraft. Okay. Oh. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Oh, Brian, I actually remember you talking about that with certain props, how it was harder to spot the, the caterpillars. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the editing is great. What? <laughs> I don't think you can smell that too. <laughs> <laughs> you need to eat. <laughs> They're getting a lot of rain in this playthrough. A lot of rain. <laughs> wow. It's funny that they could panic because of rain when you think rain is a good thing. Too much of a good thing, right? Yeah. Oh, the applause. That's cute. I love the applause that That's they cute. applaud each other. That's nice. fantastic. That's how you feel. You feel like you've actually like survived something like <laughs> right. impactful in your life. <laughs> oh, we're alive. They That's had right. time Take to eat, breath. though. That was fantastic. <laughs> I yeah, never yeah. took it took a break to eat. <laughs> and I wonder if farmers feel the same way. Like they get, they finally get the harvest done and then they like sent it off and they could just sit back and like, okay. Applause. And I relax for a minute. And then they look at an empty field and like, oh goodness, I think this all go. again. Right? Do, do we need to add a player stamina meter, meter into uh, Farmcraft 3 with the, uh, you know, you gotta make sure you're, you're well fed or you're gonna pass out in the fields trying to do all this work. That actually would have been really uh, interesting addition. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so why didn't you do that, Brian? Huh? Yeah, Brian. Apparently, just not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting us all down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We are learning from the kids yet again. Here's you got to keep some things good. on the back burner, pun intended. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, nice. Good, uh, good call. Very good. Oh, man. It has been so fun watching all these videos today. I have just had a blast seeing what the students cool. have done really cool we appreciate those of you who sent in videos for us to use for this and trust me we are going to be looking for more of this kind of stuff in the future Absolutely. because this shows me exactly what we set out to do with farmcraft it's happening the kids are learning they're learning about agriculture they're developing those soft skills or those stem skills that are so important just fantastic Brian, kudos, man. You did a great job. Thank yes, you. there will always be, be new part things of this team. you can add in the future, but this is just fantastic. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Speaking of Brian and some tips, we do have some suggestions. Today, as you've noticed, is all about helping you with your submissions for the end of the season. And so Brian and his team have collected some tips for you. And if you go, Eric, you want to go ahead and walk them through how to get here? Absolutely. So by now, I think they all know how to get to the Farmcraft page on the NACEF website. But just a reminder, you can be found under Learning, under NACEF Farmcraft 2022, or under Compete under Minecraft Events. And then there's a link that'll bring you here. So I won't go through all of that again. But what is new here on the page is this little blue button right down here, which is Farmcraft Tips. On our last stream, we mentioned uh, that Brian and the team at Cleverlike had been doing a phenomenal job tweeting out little kind of bite-sized uh, golden nuggets, if you will, of, of, of knowledge uh, that can help in your gameplay. And so we, you know, the, the NASF team said, why not put all of that in one place? So if we go to that Farmcraft Tips, it takes us to a blog post right on the NASF site where you can see all of the tweets and they're loading in right now. There we go. Uh, all of the tweets that have gone out that give you those little tips. So you can come here, find tips um, tweeted out by Clever Like Studios, which are phenomenal. Uh, and to be honest, if you've got a Twitter, you can even engage with these right from here. You can like, you can reply if you had questions about one. If you wanted to come in like, hey, we learned this. We knew how to do this. Here's another thing you can do. Um, you can engage uh, in those Twitter posts right there. And um, it just goes on and on. There are a lot of tips, a lot, a lot yep. of tips. We were busy. Wow. A lot That's of right. tips and ideas. Lots to share. And a reminder, too, we so mentioned new. earlier that there is a Discord where you can interact with each other. And that would be a great place to share your own tips as well. If there's something you've discovered, like the last video, was it the last one? I'm losing track. When, the, when we discovered about the chest and storing your bug spray in the chest. So if you have little tips like that that you want to share, 
if you're kind and you want to share those tips with your competitors, sure. you can put those in the Discord. <laughs> and we've got a hashtag for it as well, right? Yep. Hashtag Farmcraft Tips. So yep. you know, if you've got a good yeah. tip, um, so that's that's phenomenal. And then I'm going to go back to our uh, Farmcraft page and just remind everyone that the Flipgrid uh, submissions for Challenge One, Two, and Three are live. If you're not sure what to do for those, go back and watch our pre-recorded streams. We talk about each of those. Uh, and make sure those are submitted. And then of course, most importantly, once those are done, you want to capture some screenshots or some video of your score, and you wanna submit those scores, uh, and get yourself on that leaderboard once the leaderboard goes live. Um, and that's where we're gonna be looking as we get into our awards coming up real, real soon. All right, exactly. Um, and so we've talked about just having such a great time today watching all these videos and seeing the feedback. We have one other place where you could submit your feedback for us. So if you want to scroll to that photo voice activity, there you go. Um, this is another place where as teams, you can submit your feedback for us and just give us your ideas and um, how, what your experience has been like. And you would click right there. And we do have an incentive. So if you participate in this, we do have some Farmcraft skins that you can get for your team. Skins. So I would highly encourage that you participate in this photo voice activity. We're really looking forward to the feedback that you all have for us here. What, what um, you guys tell us helps us make the uh, game and program even better. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We take what you say and we apply it as much as possible if it makes sense. And so we already know that Brian potentially has an idea to make sure we all eat correctly next time we're playing this mm -hmm. game. <laughs> oh, wait, not on the stream. We should not be eating while we're live on the stream because I was going to okay. bring food with me next time. Well, we, we, it was actually one of our gameplays, one of our gameplays of the previous version or, or one of the gameplays we played with one of the people's from Adam's office. He's like, where's the rain? When's the rain? And I'm like, there is no rain, but there will be. And so we added rain in response to that kind of feedback and expectation. So, you know, like eating and the rest of what happens to your food. Well, I, let's not take that too far. <laughs> <laughs> What's the original fertilizer? Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a science uh, oh, you know, program, so go on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Oh, moving yeah, right along there. You know, I mean, I'm not opposed to adding that to the game. That would actually be awesome. It but, looks yeah. like an emoji. I mean, there would be an item that is easily skinnable. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That looks like... Uh, I know what I would enjoy. I would enjoy yeah. the process. And since this is one of our last streams before our sort of finale, um, I want to take this one more time to say there is an Easter egg in the game that we have not seen the evidence of anyone finding yet this season. What? So, mm -hmm. I what? did get a tag. I did get a tag on Twitter. Oh, it has been found by somebody. Oh, oh okay. Maybe we'll have to give them a shout out during the award stream. A search. A yes, search we now. should. Oh. All right. Oh, 100%. All right. So we have teams from 68 countries participating. And so far, we're aware of only one that has found it. So there's a little challenge for you all in the next couple days. Not that you're not busy enough already, because we know that you are working to wrap up your submissions and get those all in. Uh, but also, if you discover that Easter egg, make sure you let us know. And it is well hidden. So, you know, we don't spend entire yeah. class periods trying to find it, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, reminder, we'd love to see you in Discord. We'll be there and chatting with you. And um, make sure that you look at those Farmcraft tips as you pull together your final submissions. That Make sure you submit to the leaderboard. Am I forgetting anything? I think that's it. And then... The two next, days, two the days. Two days, and then the next stream that we have on June 1st, we're going to have our um, finals live stream. So we are coming right on down to the end. Team Amusubi. <laughs> Amo, Amusubi. They found oh, it. They found it. Oh, big mm. shout out. Yes. Wow. I'll, 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 send uh, it. Musubi. I'll tag Nathan. Amusubi. O M U S U B I. Okay, oh, cool. Do you know where they're from by chance? No, but it no. looks um, 
I think we actually featured one of their videos this season. I was thinking it sounded familiar. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. It does sound familiar. All right. Well, thank you all again for joining us today. And um, take these tips and tricks and the advice from your peers that you have heard and use those for your submissions, which are due on the 27th. And we will see you all very soon again. Mm -hmm.